My name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you about how to stop people pleasing and start setting healthy boundaries right now. So this is something that really plagues people when there's a lot of conditioning in childhood that makes them feel like, okay, in order to be worthy of love, be included, be liked, be accepted, I have to forego my boundaries. So often people become boundaryless and they choose to be boundaryless or more often than not be without boundaries because there's some kind of subconscious strategy in it for them according to their conditioning, their conditioned programming. So what's really happening is that, and something you should know, is that your conscious and subconscious mind collectively, every single thing that they do is, is chosen from a place of perceiving more benefits than drawbacks. Now, the interesting part is this is according to our programming. So this is really according to like our weight of positive versus negative emotional associations. So let's say, for example, in childhood, let's pretend there's little Bob and Bob as a little kid is in a position where he gets punished, rejected um, by his caregivers for setting boundaries or for saying no or for disagreeing with them. And then let's say he goes to school and he finds the same thing. If he you know, is too rebellious or, or tries to say no, or has a different opinion. Maybe his friends exclude him. Maybe his teachers seem to reject him or shut him down. And so he gets all this weight on one side of the emotional teeter totter that says, oh, there's more drawbacks to setting boundaries than benefits. No, those are his conditioned programs. Now, once something's a program at the subconscious level of mind, it doesn't like, we don't become an adult and then suddenly realize from our conscious mind's perspective, oh, it's logical to set boundaries. Without boundaries, I'm not myself in relationships. I'm not truthful and loyal to myself in relationships. I'm not living in alignment with my needs. I become resentful. We don't see all those costs from a conscious, logical perspective and then just switch it. We actually have to reprogram this pattern, right? So we've got all this emotional storage on one side of the teeter-totter that says setting boundaries is bad. It will get me all these negative things and outcomes according to my conditioning when I first developed those programs. Then we can grow up and consciously we can start seeing the cost to not having boundaries, feeling taken advantage of, used, unprotected, unsafe, frustrated. You know, we can see all these different like downsides, but until we actually target the subconscious level of mind and actually reprogram at that level, then our conscious mind will know better and we'll say, oh, we should set boundaries. And yet we will keep falling back into the same patterns of being boundaryless. Why? Because it's really our subconscious mind running the show and really our subconscious mind is the one making decisions. Um, and research has proven this conclusively. If you haven't heard this already on this channel, our subconscious and unconscious collectively are responsible for 95 to 97% of our thoughts, behaviors, beliefs, <laughs> emotions, and actions. Um, so the very first step to setting boundaries and actually reconditioning this is to first understand like what your relationship to your boundaries is like now. And that really consists of like, where are you setting boundaries in the seven areas of life and where are you feeling boundaryless? Okay. And we want to really look like in your career being one of the seven areas of life, are you good with setting boundaries or do people constantly drop work on your plate and you do their work instead of your own and then fall behind at your own and then feel resentful? You know, like what are your patterns with boundaries in the workforce? Um, with money is a big area, right? And really assessing that mentally is like really your thoughts, opinions, beliefs. So in that area of life where, how are you doing at setting boundaries? Do you express your truth? Do you deny your truth? Do you pretend your truth is something other than it is to please the people around you? Like, where, what are you doing in that area of life, right? Um, emotionally, are you good with emotional boundaries or do you take on everybody's emotions and kind of forget where you end and somebody else begins? So we've got career, financial, mental, emotional, spiritual. Um, this can be something to do with your relationship to God, your relationship to religion, um, if you don't have any particular spiritual or, um, religious beliefs, it can also just be your relationship to your own morals and values, um, and how you're showing up there. Like, do you try to do what's cool to fit in, even though it's at the expense of your own moral truth, right? So, you know, where are you at with boundaries in that area? And then physical is your health, your physical space, your belongings, and then relationships, you know, friends, family, romantic relationships. How are you with setting boundaries there? 
So you want to start by just like doing a full scale audit and checking in with like your boundaries, how you show up, these sorts of things. Um, and then we want to start doing some like really trying to balance out that teeter totter at the subconscious level of mind, because until we change our emotional associations and see setting boundaries as being as good as it is negative, right? Of course, it can be either one, there can be negative outcomes to things at times, but we don't want to have this one-sided perspective, right? We want to be able to see how you know, look, there's lots of benefits to setting boundaries. Sure, there can be costs, but maybe those costs are even with the wrong people, right? Maybe it can cost us a friendship if we have a friend who thinks that we should always be people pleasing them and we can't really have an individual sense of self or needs, right? And so maybe it will actually help us exit those more toxic relationships if they're there. So anyways, um, that first step is the audit. By the way, if you want to do a whole deep dive into this, we have a course you can check out for free for seven days. It takes you through the audit, reconditioning, exposure work, all these things that you need to do to like masterfully learn to set boundaries and develop a strong sense of assertiveness at the subconscious level, which will lead you in general to, to feeling more self-confident, being more in alignment with your truth, being able to be vulnerable and show your true self in relationships and actually get your needs met and have more of a healthy equal exchange and the relationships around you. So anyways, you can check that out for free for seven days below. Um, so we want to audit first, and then we want to look at like some cost benefit analysis. Like, let's really take a look. Your subconscious has learned back probably from childhood or sometime long ago that setting boundaries comes with all these costs or sorry. Yeah. Setting boundaries comes with all these costs, but like what on the flip, what about on the flip side? Like <laughs> you're an adult now, it's maybe decades and decades later. What does it cost you to not set boundaries? And what are the actual benefits of setting boundaries? And you want to really list out a bunch of stuff here so you can kind of like balance that emotional teeter-totter and through repetition and emotion, which is what really reaches the subconscious mind, feel about how setting boundaries has benefits. Then what you want to be able to do is um, assess from where you did that first audit. Okay, I see where I'm struggling with boundaries, like in what area in my career and my friendships or whatever it might be. And I see the cost to that. And I see the benefits of if I did set those boundaries. Now, what do I want those boundaries to be? Okay, is your next big step. And then step four, so, and you wanna assess them, evaluate them, right? What would I want them to be? If you want more guidance, go into that boundaries course for free and you can actually see like all the different examples and things like that. Very lengthy, I can't put it all into a, a short YouTube video. And then step four is to start doing some practice work, doing some exposure work, setting some boundaries in small increments over time. Um, you can start with visualization if you're really afraid, because that just helps familiarize the subconscious mind since it has a hard time telling the difference between what's real and what's imagined. Um, and then as you get more comfortable, practice setting boundaries with easy people that you trust first, and then expand out into more difficult people and then to all people. And eventually you'll recondition your relationship with boundaries until it becomes something that's second nature. And I just want to add a bonus tip for our fearful avoidance watching this video. Um, so this used to be me. Um, I was a fearful avoidant, did a lot of reconditioning on my attachment style, on my boundaries being a huge place of growth for me. Um, and one thing that was really helpful for me to realize as a person is that you may think that setting boundaries you're good at because you're good at doing it when you're mad. But true assertiveness and healthy boundaries doesn't come from anger. <laughs> if you're setting them from the place of anger, you probably had a lot of things that went wrong first, right? A lot of times you didn't speak up first. A lot of times you denied your boundaries first or felt unseen or unheard because you weren't communicating. True healthy boundaries means that you don't have to ever set them from anger, right? It means that you feel comfortable in real time just being like, no, that's a no for me sorry. And, and what else do you propose, right? Like being able to negotiate and just say your yeses and nos truthfully so that when it's a, a no from me to somebody else, it's not a no, right? It's a yes to my truth while I'm saying no to somebody else. So there's still, it's still like a truth that's happening. Um, and that also allows me to be seen, be understood, be um, vulnerable in my relationships to others because I'm being my true self to them. I'm being honest about my yeses and nos. So just a reminder as well for anybody who does struggle to set boundaries that it shouldn't be done from a place of anger and that if you think you're good at setting boundaries because you're good at getting really mad finally after so many things went wrong, that's still a really important place to be practicing growing going forward. Um, so hopefully that makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.